We will get started. All right, well, good afternoon. Welcome to Links to Learning. It is Tuesday, the last Tuesday of November. Hard to believe another month is like in two days coming, almost the end of the year. So I hope that your day is going well. I hope you are well hydrated. I hope you got to spend a moment with Creator just to go outside on the land, um, find that good connection. Uh, we're just going to take a moment and press pause. We'll take a deep breath in. Maybe plant two feet on the ground, maybe stand up and give a good stretch, whatever it is you need to do. And just press pause and just take a moment to, to offer gratitude for all the gifts that are surrounding you. Even when we go through those hard seasons of our lives, there's at least you know one or two things that we are surrounded by in beauty and in goodness that we never walk alone on our journey. So we give thanks to creator for the, the gift of this day, the gift of this opportunity that we can come and we can learn we can be inspired. We can grow, right? These links to learning are all about building capacity. So this is awesome that we can gather on Tuesday afternoon um, and just listen and just take in the knowledge and the wisdom that's being shared. So we give thanks to Creator for this opportunity. Hi, hi. And to Candu. Candu has been hosting these webinars for a couple of years now. So I hope that you walk away every time with some good knowledge. So it is the last Tuesday of the month. Make sure at the end of today's presentation that you fill out that evaluation link. And when you do, your name is going to get your name is going to be entered to win. There's one $500 Visa gift card that you could potentially win. So it's in your best interest to fill out that evaluation link. And we love to hear your voices. So it's you know good for us when we get to hear from you, get to hear your feedback. So please fill that in at the end of today's webinar. Elsie will send that out to you. Um, and so let's get this party started, shall we? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about tourism. We got a great guest speaker, Charmaine from Thunder Bay. She's <laughs> joining us. She was just saying it's a snowstorm out there. I'm joining from Edmonton and Miskwichi, Wisconsin. It's not a snowstorm, but it's definitely chilly out. Like, get your winter coats, boots, you know, um, toques, what are these calls? Mittens, scarves out because winter has arrived. All right, so we're going to talk about tourism and attaining clients. So I think Charmaine to this afternoon, she's going to talk about her work, uh, what she's done with Indigenous businesses to create a 360 video based tours that allow users from anywhere in the world to take a peek into what your tourism operators and our community have to offer. And I really believe, you know, our indigenous communities, our peoples, you know, they're bringing the tourism piece to the forefront. Like we have so much to celebrate. We have so much to show the world. So I think that this is such a timely webinar. So a little bit about our guest speaker. So she is a manager of Indigenous engagement and training. She comes from a background of community economic development with 15 years, 15 years of experience. She's an Irish Ojibwe Quay, born and raised in Northern Ontario. Hario. Charmaine has a passion for the North and the development of its peoples. She's a strong believer in using technology to encourage relationships between our youth and elders. I love that. That's so important, as well as to connect people to opportunity. She believes it's more than just technology-driven change. It's an opportunity to harness converging technologies with a lifelong traditional knowledge to create an inclusive, human-centered, 
future for everyone. What a beautiful bio. <laughs> so we're happy that you're spending time with us this afternoon here at Candy Links to Learning. Um, so we're just welcoming you with open arms and the floor, my friend, is yours. I'm passing you this virtual mic. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to have everybody here. So let me just, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully it shares properly. <laughs> um, okay. Give me the thumbs up, Michelle. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so Bojo, Ozo Benesequen, Additional Kaz, Migazi Dodam, Bitagon, Nishnabek, and Dojba. My spirit name is Yellow Thunderbird. My Western name is Charmaine McCraw, and I'm of Eagle Clan. My bloodline comes from Bitagon, Nishnabek, uh, which is on the northern shores of Lake Superior. And I'm currently calling Thunder Bay home. So, Chimigwech, for joining me today. And I just want to acknowledge, take a minute to acknowledge whatever traditional territory you are on. Today, I'm in the traditional territory of Fort William First Nation and the Robson Superior Treaty Group. So just very thankful to be here with everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, my company first and the technology, and then we'll go in and talk about some successes and applications of the technology uh, that we've, we've seen in tourism and in kind of the cultural preservation side. So first... Oh, I hope I click those buttons. <laughs> First, I just want to uh, talk about what inspires us to do what we do at Origin. Um, I've been with the company for about five, five and a half years now, uh, which is the longest company I've ever been with. I've never been happier at a company. Uh, they're very like a family here. And uh, it's something that kind of inspires me to stay with the company. So, but this is what inspires everything that we do here at Origin. Include me. 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 I always like to play that at the beginning. I just finished uh, implementing a five-year project where I connected people to employment in the heavy equipment sector. And I, uh, as we were going through the project, I just always get them to say a little include me clip. And it was amazing how shy they were to just say those two words. And I don't want people to be shy anymore. So really, that is really everything that drives me is making sure that our Indigenous people are included um, in what, whatever it is in Canadian society um, and really kind of understanding their pride, purpose and, uh, you know, the, their importance of being here. So just a little bit about origin, I won't go into too much depth. We were created in 2009. Uh, we're Indigenous owned and operated. Uh, we've established relationships with over 100 First Nation communities. And we always take a collaborative approach when we're working with communities. So we never come in knowing what we're going to do. We come in, we work with the community to make sure that our approach works with the community because we know each community is very unique and different. Uh, we we want to deliver meaningful employment outcomes as well as cultural connections for urban or indigenous youth and people that are in urban areas, but really providing meaningful engagement to communities and organizations that we work with. So uh, the vision of the company really is to advance economic reconciliation uh, for Indigenous people of Canada. And we do this by creating tech forward, immersive and inspiring learning experiences. So um origin works mainly with four four groups so specifically indigenous communities we work with our knowledge keepers we work with corporate canada and we work with indigenous people that's that's again what drives everything that we do here at origin um, so traditionally, we started our company started out delivering uh, employment readiness training and economic development consulting to First Nations, and uh, that's really when I first came into Origin uh, way back then. And uh, so I did uh, prod choose life programs with Casablanca. I help communities get cultural facilities up and running, um, kind of the EDO stuff that that I used to do when I was younger as well. But in 2018, uh, our company kind of embarked on a bit of a journey to identify how the world of virtual reality really could enhance our service delivery, but also how it can enhance um, 
the way people connect to career and culture. And that's when Immersive Link was born. So Immersive Link, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit further, but that's it. That's it. It's in a it's in a headset. So it's an app. Um, so as a lead of Indigenous engagement and training, uh, this quote plays kind of an important role on how I view what my team does here. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. And so what I've developed over the last five years is a process called First People First, where um, individuals who participate in any of our programming, they go through a process of self-discovery where people learn about their natural skills and abilities and explore how that connects to career. And then we use technology to encourage that career exploration and oftentimes connect them to training and employment opportunities. But we mimic the same process um, and encourage Indigenous and non-Indigenous people to connect with and explore Indigenous culture. So the Immersive Link system, um, the, it, our software or our app was developed by a self-taught coder named Andrew Wiglass. He's an Anishinaabe from Gull Bay First Nation. Um, the system really goes into exploring career, exploring culture. Uh, we use it for integrated virtual learning and our latest kind of development with the system is Immersive Link Tours. So um, as I said earlier, I'll talk about some of the applications and the successes that we've seen with the system and how you might be able to use it in your community. So generation one, uh, you can kind of see, you know, it kind of looks like Netflix a little bit in the background. Uh, we can kind of all identify with scrolling through thumbnails on Netflix to figure out what we're going to watch. And, you know, um, so Andrew really designed our user interface to kind of mimic and add this comfort for the user. So when they're putting on the headset, it's like, oh, I got this. I know how to scroll through. I know how to use this. So it's not something that is brand new. And our first generation of immersive link experiences focused on career exploration um, through, well, through virtual experiences. Um, I'm going to skip that slide because it's too wordy. <laughs> so immersive link careers, really what it is about is uh, it's short vignettes of a day in the life of an environmental monitor, a day in the life of a boiler maker, a day in the life of a chef or an underground miner. And really they're designed to kind of allow the viewer to determine through their own lens, whether they can see themselves working in that environment. Uh, the experiences are 360 video based. They're not gamified environments. So they're not computer generated. They're more like hosted experiences. So you put the headset on and an and a employee of that workplace meets you and brings you through the workplace to kind of see um, what the job is all about and, and what people can learn. After launching our system uh, with Immersive Link Careers, and we're in about a thousand schools in Ontario alone. Um, and so it's being used in um, educa uh, Indigenous education classrooms now. Uh, it was used in career explorations and civics classes at the beginning uh, for the career exploration piece. So we kind of seen an opportunity to share the beauty of and increase awareness of Indigenous culture for both Indigenous and non-Indigenous people, and an opportunity to preserve traditional knowledge and use technology to bridge the gap between elders and youth. And I'll just talk about a quick experience um, that I've had recently on my uh, from my home community. We've had about eight of our elders, our knowledge keepers, pass in the last year. And all of their knowledge, I mean, is gone now, except for the stuff that we were able to preserve, right? But one of the things that's super cool about the Immersive Link system now is really being able to capture that. So think of think of 10 years down the road, being able to put on the headset and still listen to your Kokum or your Nokomis or your Mishomis talk about some of the stories that they have or some of the, some of the teachings that they want to share. And, and it's still there, right? And you can still hear their voice and you can still um, learn from their knowledge from, for generations to come. And that's really kind of the inspiration behind Immersive Link Cultural is really being able to um, preserve that knowledge and then use technology to kind of reel the youth in a little bit to, to find that interest piece. So I'm just going to show kind of a short experience. Um, keep in mind that these experiences are 
viewed in 360 videos. So that means like you can look all around and it's like you're standing right there with the knowledge keeper. Um, but this is one that we did with a young man. Actually, he's from my home area, well, along Lake 58, so just up the river. And uh, he was very excited to be able to sh share his knowledge about kind of scraping a moose hide. So we'll go over this part. Ah, bonjour, Kakinuliuk, Wapskimako, Kajitan, and this Nakas Moje and two of them. Long Lake 58 and Don Jaba, Omasu Lakon Dayang Nongam. What I said there was hello, everyone. My, my name is White Bear Warrior, and uh, I li I'm from Long Lake 58 and I come from the Pike Clan, and I live here today in Sioux Lookout. Um, today, we're going to show you guys how to uh, flush and scrape a moose hide. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna tie four corners like that, just to give it to evenly um, stretched out, right? So what we'll do is we'll grab some rope and we'll one guy tie here, one there, one there, since there's four of us here. Hey, so now that we have it all strung up, some of the tools that we use is the front bone, just like the one you're holding. That's the, uh, the start process. And, and, and I guess this kind of like when it uh, hasn't been cut yet and this is your finished product. And of course, um, we put a piece of hide on the top with a loop and it just prevents the bone from uh, slipping out of your hand. But when we start, we always start off with a nice cut. We don't want to damage the hide. We don't want, you know, like some of the stuff happening up here. We don't want that. We want to cut and just enough where the flesh separates. We go right across. That's what we want. Nice and clean. Because we're trying not to put uh, as much marks as possible, right? Because it'll will show on the finished product. So what you do, you kind of get that bone right in there and you start pushing it like that and you see the flesh coming off it just comes right down right and you just go along just going to um fast forward a little bit just to hear what peter has to say am i on mute no, okay. Peter has to say uh, just towards the end. So it's just really to kind of give you an idea of how the how it's captured. Doing this, you know, it's very important that we keep this tradition alive. When I do things like this, I'm thinking about our ancestors and, and keeping that way of life, almost like keeping them alive and remembering them and honoring them. So I think it's very important that we keep on this uh, tradition and that these practices are passed down. I hope everybody enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you guys again next time. All right, so that, that is like, we have, I think right now we have about 32 different cultural kind of experiences where we work with different indigenous knowledge keepers who want to share something. Uh, so we always make sure that when we're doing um, the cultural sharing that we're not actually sharing ceremony, we're not actually, you know, um, breaking kind of any of those protocols. But what one thing we do do, for example, is with the full moon ceremony, um, is we talk about the meaning of the ceremony and the importance of it and why it would be something good to do. Um, so and then kind of the preparation around it. So just to give you a bit of an idea of what the Immersive Link Cultural does, and so that's kind of our generation one stuff. So it's like, you know, uh, looking at career, looking at culture and just doing that exploration. I like to think of them as like little movie trailers just to get people interested, just to get them wanting to know more. And then when they come through our workshops and they, they work with us, we actually connect them to the real life knowledge keepers or the real life employers uh, so that they can find out more information. So in our world of TikTok and very quick snippets of information, we're finding it very successful with the youth that we work with.
So generation two. So so we we fast forward that a little bit. Uh, we're doing well with the immersive link. It's available by subscription. So if anybody uh, wants to use it in their communities, they can just get in touch with us. So generation two, what we did was we actually created a learning management system that had a VR plugin. And so I'll just show you briefly, I think it's a two quick two minute video um, about the learning management system and kind of how that works. Uh, in the next five years, we're actually going to be implementing a huge project uh, where we're actually using this system as a as a pilot to help test for test for and identify aptitude for people before we invest training dollars into them. So this is just something uh, to help you understand. Hello and welcome to a demonstration on our VR LMS system. We're happy to share with you, this is the online platform where you build courses and you issue them to users, any number of users, and you can track the results. So this is uh, Ashley, we're logged in as Ashley right now, and she's partway through a concrete finishing course. The course itself can have any kind of information you want the, the uh, user to learn. Uh, it could be made up of a variety of different things, including video. What we're really interested in showing you right now is the integration with the virtual reality. So this is really neat and proprietary part of our system. And here, Ashley, as a user, will be prompted to go put the headset on, go to the worksite virtually, and she'll be asked, answering questions regarding which PPE to use on the job, as well as some tools. So have a look at that. So Ashley now has the headset on. She'll enter in her four-digit code that matches. And now she's connected to the first part of the quiz in the headset, which is selecting the proper PPE for the cement finisher. Now that she's completed that quiz, she submits and the results will sync back to the LMS and now we can have the user go out even further to the worksite. So here's a sample of just another environment we can add voiceover, video on video, multiple choice quiz elements, really the possibilities are endless. Um, so we're excited that you came along today and uh, we're happy to share uh, our technology. So the learning management system is built on a Unity platform. So the really cool thing is that um, it works in so many different ways. So not just for the training side, because that's where our roots are and origin is getting people ready for work. Uh, but now we're able to use it to kind of create tours and be able to kind of use it to promote um, Indigenous experiences. So uh one of the biggest projects that we we have been working on when it comes to tourism is we worked with indigenous tourism ontario but really um we'd love to work with uh more community focused uh tourist operators to kind of what we do is we go in we create an experience so a standalone experience so somebody which can be included in our cultural library. So that just gives you that much more reach um, in Ontario specifically. I know not everybody's from Ontario, but uh, we do have partners across Canada as well. But we come in and we can create a single experience or we can create multiple experiences and have them in a library. So if a community, say, say Moose Cree First Nation, they have a number of different tourism outfitters in there. They could create individual experiences for all their tourism outfitters, and then we could put them all together in one tour. The Moose Cree people that go and do like trade shows and exhibitions and those kind of things can then bring the headset with them and be people will be able to see what it's like to be in Moose Cree. And they would be able to be like, hey, I want to go do that experience or hey, I want to go check out the community. How do I get there? How do I, you know, how do I become a, a tourist of Moose Cree First Nation? Uh, so we worked with a number of tourism operators in Ontario, and I just kind of threw together a quick clip of three different ones so you can kind of understand uh, what their experiences look like. So we'll just do that now. Hi, 
Kwekaikina. Hello and welcome to Indigenous Experiences. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin people, right here in the National Capital Region at the Canadian Museum of History. My name is Marie Sirin, I am Naskapi from Kawawa Chikamach, and I am pleased to welcome you as we embark on the journey of the various adventures of Indigenous experiences. Let's get started. Indigenous experience. Ani Bojo, Neil Dabosky, Disnikaz, Chiging Donjaba. My name is Neil Dabosky. I live on Manitoulin Island, the largest freshwater island in the world, and I'm from Chiging First Nation. My wife and I have a passion for the outdoors, and that's why Diane and I started a couple of our businesses, Island Sunrise Cottages, Fishing and Hunting Outfitters, and Fuel the Fire TV. We offer packages like salmon charters, we do canoe orientation, we do kayak trips, and we really want to focus on what Manitoulin Island has to offer. We've got great hiking trails here, and we also have great access to game. And if you want to check out our salmon charters or what we have to offer in terms of Island Sunrise, check out www.islandsunrise.ca. Thanks for joining us. Hello, bonjour, Tanishi. Mon nom c'est Michel Savoie, which means close to creator, her voice, her path. I'm joining you from Voyage Our Wilderness and invite you on an incredible journey here on the border of Quetico Park, Nim Lake. As always, when we're paddling a Montreal or a Canot du Nord, a big canoe as they call them, uh, the person in the middle would be called a chanteur from Voyager Island, the gateway to Quetico Park. It's the heartland of Canada's canoe country. It's also home to over 600 lakes and the traditional roots of the First Nations and Métis Voyagers. Tanishi, welcome to Voyager. We would love to connect you to the land and the heart and song of its peoples. So those are some clips <laughs> of their experiences. And, and you have to realize like they don't look good on flat screen. So, and they're not as impactful, but think about it like as Michelle, she's a Métis from our area. And as you're, as you have the headset on, it's like you're sitting with her in the canoe. So she's sitting there and she's talking to you. Um, same thing when um, uh, the gentleman from Chiging was talking, you know, uh, I put that last clip of him in the deer stand because that's what we, the experience that we did with him was we actually went out hunting with him and captured that feeling of being out in a tree stand and, and that feeling of being close to, you know, the animals in the bush and, and so it's literally like you're sitting with him in the tree stand. And, and then same goes for Indigenous uh, experiences based out of Ottawa. So those are, those are some of the ways, you know, and those are all individual experiences. A few of them are in our cultural library. So like I said, there's um, headsets across Canada that it becomes free marketing <laughs> for, for your tourist operator, uh, wherever they might be operating out of. So bringing it all together, we created uh, Immersive Link Tours. So Immersive Link Tours is really about investment attraction and traditional knowledge tours. Uh, it's like kind of, you know, you immerse yourself in what was, what is, and what can be. So the opportunities of using this tool are really to kind of overcome remote locations, uh, expedite kind of reconciling with advancing world economies. So really being able to bring people to your community, um, get them interested and then get them wanting to visit or invest in, in some of the opportunities you have in your community. Um, preserving kind of our biological and land-based traditional knowledge and then using technology to kind of reinstate our place as kind of caretakers of the land and, and really 
being able to explain to people our connection to the land and, and why, why it matters so much to us. In our area here in Ontario, we have a lot of mining activity going on. And, you know, we do the traditional ecological mapping and the knowledge of that mapping of that knowledge but oftentimes it's like an x on the map right and so the knowledge keeper that's sharing that information with the with the data collectors sometimes they it's hard for industry to really understand the significance of that place and if we do uh this kind of mapping of our traditional territories using this vr it's like people are standing there and listening to the elders stories or listening to the knowledge keepers story as they're standing in that place so it really kind of enhances and creates more of an understanding for people that are coming into the territory that don't really understand it at all um one of the examples uh that we did recently with was with terrace bc and the high Slough first nation uh so we did an investment tour for the city of terrace and we worked with kvas out of the high Slough first nation and it was really about creating opportunities um for new investment but in turn then creating job opportunities for the people in a territory so um with the project that we did in terrace investors can kind of explore the area without even being there uh see what's available see how they might be able to actually invest in the city and then in turn provide jobs for indigenous peoples that are living close to terrace bc um, so here's just a little promo of some of the stuff we did with Terrace. So it was a really um, fun project with with Terrace, and uh, it was great to work with the, the Heisler Nation out there as well. Um, another way that we're using the kind of tour function is really to help people kind of, well, this is what our tagline, kind of close the gap between these stories and these stories. So really helping people to understand our communities, understand our values and our visions for our communities um, from anywhere in the world. So uh, we recently were working with Red Rock Indian Band and one of the things that they wanted to do was really promote uh, their nation and their powwow. Um, so we created a tour um, which held kind of a, a number of different experiences that you could travel to. I seen you seen the map that you could kind of point and click and it will travel you to that place, um, but also tells the story of their of their nation. So um, just to keep up with the video, I'll share another video.
So I know um, when I travel of how circuit, I'm a jingle dress dancer myself. And, and I know uh, how much it, that is a tourism event in itself. A lot of times I've traveled all over Ontario in my kind of uh, stomping grounds here. And, you know, every time I go, I learn something new about a community that I visit. I make new friends. I make new travel plans. Uh, so powwow can be a really um, good tourism or economic driver in your community as well. Uh, so it's just something I wanted to share as a way of kind of applying the technology that we're using today. Uh, earlier this year in March, I had the opportunity to work with the Gwich'in, Tetlik Gwich'in Nation in Fort McPherson, Northwest Territories. And one of the things that they wanted to do was be able to build an educational tour, um, tool, sorry, <laughs> that really kind of reinforced their cultural traditions so they and then they wanted to do it using technology to be able to inspire their youth but what it also became was an opportunity to kind of map out some of their very unique trails uh unique food food processes and uh unique clothing so that anybody coming to visit the fort mcpherson or the tetlequitchen nation um has an idea of what they're kind of coming into and and the importance of their their cultural traditions and knowledge as well. So it was a beautiful experience. I got to go up there for an entire week. Um, it was gorgeous. We worked with about eight youth and about uh, seven elders. And we actually went and we winter camped on the land and we learned about all of their sacred places. And, and it was really amazing. I learned a lot of uh, the Gwich'in language, which was also very interesting and very beautiful to hear a little bit different than the Ojibwe language that uh, lives and breeds in my area. So um, just so that you uh, have an idea of kind of what their tour uh, looked like, I'll just share this. story is in the landscape. The only way to really know the story is to go to the land. This is what we inherited. And we have the responsibility to ensure that the inheritance is given to the next generation. To make sure that the original story is not left behind, but is taken with you. Shakujin Kat, Chukjin Gwinzi, Shrini Ai Tida Kat Kutsat Nitsaginihi. Eno Guno. No what's in a what's who cut thuck queensy no what's at good high gun lee I ended high cho a co Just wanted to show you kind of, you know, some of the features so that you understand how it can be applied, right? So that's what I'm saying with your tourism outfitters. If you, you know, had a map of them, we can really bring that piece to life and then figure, help 
work with you to be able to monetize that. So talking about economic development and the economic kind of opportunities coming out of all of this is, you know, we've had a number of communities um, we've worked with a number of communities to kind of create museum type exhibits with fees to access. So in major airports and local attractions, you kind of set up a little VR booth, people that are landing and you're close to your traditional territory or, um, you know, as long as you want that, that attraction to, to your businesses, um, you know, setting them up in those major airports or those local attractions, wherever they're landing and giving them a peek at what you have to offer really allows them to then say, okay, I feel comfortable now. And it's not, it's not completely unknown. I know what I want to go do. So I go and do it. Um, you can sell kind of virtual experiences to conferences. So um, I know Indigenous Tourism Ontario has done this. So they've featured, uh, I think it was the Voyager Wilderness one, um, but work with your tourist operators to kind of, you know, sell their experience to uh, to conferences. So people get Google Cardboards and then they, you know, get to experience your tourist attractions within your within your community or your traditional area. And then you can also um, upload the experiences to, so that you can do direct purchase by consumers. So somebody could be randomly scrolling in an Oculus headset, you know, the ones that I had on earlier and they have it on and they're like, they search indigenous. And then all of a sudden a list of your indigenous tourism operators can come up and then they pay $1.99 or $5.99, whatever your pay scale is. And then that just becomes residual income, right? For, for your community or for your tourism association, depending on what you're wanting to do. There's such an increased demand for cultural awareness in our country today that that you would not believe how many people are seeking these things out online uh, just to develop a better understanding of First Nation communities. And then, you know, everybody's like, wow, that was really cool, Charmaine. That's a lot of information there. But like now what? Right. So I, I did a similar thing when I was at the Kandu conference and just, you know, take some time to kind of visualize some and imagine what your tour could look like for tourism in your in your area or if, or if it's just promotion of your community your community assets uh i had one community do it create a tour and then they brought it to indigenous services canada and said here's our community here's what it looks like now here's our vision and it really was able to bridge a gap that the indigenous services people at isc had no idea you know, they you can talk to them about your community, but they don't know. And I've had professors come from uh, Finland and, and do the Indigenous experiences that we have in our cultural library. And they're like, wow, you know, I just traveled to five different First Nations and I feel like I, I want to go there. I want to learn more. I want to experience more. So, you know, just take take some time. Imagine what your tour could look like for tourism attraction or investment attraction. Um, and kind of, you know, step one is to brainstorm your theme. It could be around Indigenous ecological knowledge, could be around investment attraction, could be creating a community voice, could be your powwow. Any of these can be also just for your community. You know, if you're wanting to capture and preserve knowledge of your elders in your community, you don't have to share that information with the outside world. It can be just a tool that you're using within your own membership. Um, as well. So just just keep that in mind. And then kind of decide on four to six experiences that you think you'd want to fit into that tour and then um, approach us and we will help you kind of figure out how you might um, economically benefit, how you kind of might monetize some of the stuff that you're doing, if that's what you want to do it for. So for tourism specifically, um, drawing in new clientele, um, and really exposing your your current tourism operations to the world, because uh, there's a big world out there that are looking for these opportunities. So yeah, so I talked a lot, and uh, I think I saved a little bit of time for any questions. If anybody has any, um, I'd be definitely happy to answer them. And uh, yeah. Wow, Charmaine, that <laughs> was like beautiful. It was cool. It was so interesting amazing amazing you you're right we live in a big world and what this is doing is giving opportunity to be able to see kind of up close and and hear those stories <gasps> just amazing awesome. so we're going to open it up if anyone has 
Any questions? <laughs> Let's see. I, I just hear outside my window the snow blowers are going. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you hear that, I apologize. Ah, so Ken is saying I'm new to the virtual reality. Wow. Like it is, our technology is amazing. And I believe like you talked about being this bridge, right? To the, the teachings, the knowledge keepers. <laughs> and then also allowing the youth to hear, right? This is our, this is right up our, our young people's alley, right? You're speaking yeah. their language as well. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. All right, so let's check that chat. Oh, so we've got some Chelsea's from Haida Gwaii. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. And we got Mohawk Territory. Um, yeah. Awesome. Happy to have you here. So any questions, anyone? Any comments? Like, I felt so good um, just hearing the brief stories, hearing some of that language. Oh, it was beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. Okay, Patrick, in the chat box, where can we go to get the VR apparatus? <laughs> so for the VR, um, I mean, the Oculus Quest 2 headset, you can literally go to Best Buy and buy it. Um, or you can um, you can reach out to us and we can set you up with a headset and subscription or like access to all the content that we have currently. Uh, but the, the VR headsets, you can just go to any kind of uh, electronic store to purchase them. Awesome. That's a great question, Patrick. So is your subscription free? So no. So the... Um, so the subscription to the content um, really, so this is how it works. So the career stuff, um, we put the cost of development because we create all the experiences too, right? We have our own VR production team. So we go out and we do this. So industry pays for those experiences. And then we provide access to that based on a subscription. And it's nominal. It's $275 a year to access all the content. And every time we create a new experience, it gets uploaded to your headset and there's new, there's new stuff all the time. With the cultural stuff, so um, we, so we still charge for access to the subscription. However, the money that goes into uh, the subscription fund for, for IL Cultural specifically, we then share back any profits to the knowledge keepers that we work with. Um, so it's about giving back and giving them some junior in their pocket too before sharing their knowledge um, across Canada. So the combined subscription and headset right now, if you like reach out to me uh, for the initial investment of the headset is a little bit expensive because it's hardware. That's there's not we can't get around that. Um, but so it was like nine ninety nine, so nine hundred ninety nine dollars, and you'd get access to both libraries and the headset. Um, and then what I would do, especially for anybody here, I would give you a code for some of the tours so you could actually experience them yourself in the headset. So. Number one thing is, though, you do not have to buy the higher hardware through us. You can buy it wherever you want to buy it. Our app is just in the Oculus store. So what we would do is just send you a link and send you a, a subscription code that you would just activate your app. And so, yeah, so anybody that has a VR headset can access it that way. Awesome. That seems really accessible. I have some nieces and nephews who have that headset. Yeah. So I am gonna have to borrow and just take me a little tour. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. If you, if you do have, um, I think we have a number of like free experiences. So if you do have a VR headset, um, just let me know or like contact can do, and they can put you in connect connection with me. Um, and I'll send you the link and there's a number of free experiences. So you can actually see for yourself what they look like in VR because on the screen, it doesn't do it justice, but I had to give some kind of way to be able to demonstrate to you guys what it looks like. But I'll tell you, like, uh, when we did our, one of our first career experiences was power line technician. And, uh, when you climb a 70 foot pole, you do not feel like you're on the ground anymore. You feel like you're climbing that 70 foot pole or when you're going underground, you feel like you're underground. So, um, and again, with the knowledge keepers is, is one of the coolest things for me is hearing the language. 
um, we don't get to hear it often enough um, in, in everyday society. And, and it's just amazing to hear, well, you've seen the one little girl with the headset on, she wore that, well, we had to make her take breaks because you need to take breaks. Otherwise you get kind of disoriented uh, but she loved it she loved listening to the elders she wanted to know more she actually attends one of our youth groups that we hold here at origin now and um, that's one thing another thing that we do is really it's the youth that are really driving us to do everything that we're doing uh, because it's really them that are our future generation and and so we want to try to support them as much as we can yeah, I love that. Um, right out of the gate, you had talked about, or even in your bio too, about that youth piece. And I mm -hmm. think that that is so important, you know, creating opportunity, creating, you know, that bridge so that our young people can learn. I just think it's, I, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions before we, we end our session today? We last, we have a couple moments left. <laughs> I think you wowed us, Charmaine. You wowed <laughs> us today. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And just, um, I just think it's brilliant. It's really, really exciting. So did you have this up and running during, you know, the pandemic? Yeah, actually, it, it was one of the things that we, Origin actually grew during the pandemic, whereas a lot of businesses did not grow. Um, our our in-person workshops and training took a little bit of a sidebar, but uh, allowed us to kind of explore the VR more. And now that COVID has kind of lifted or the restrictions have lifted, um, it's amazing. Now we have all these cool technology tools to implement because like what my what me and my team do specifically within Origin is go into community and engage in work readiness and cultural workshops. So, you know, looking at uh, seven grandfather teachings in relation to work ethic or looking at, um, you know, understanding kind of storytelling, you know, from pictographs to VR, we'll go in, we'll work with classrooms and things like that. And so now when we're doing these in-person workshops, we have all of this cool technology now too, to continue to engage youth and, and adults alike. So it's, it's exciting for sure. And um, yeah, it's, it's a nice place to be in when you're, when you're seeing success from people and, and helping people to really overcome things. I know I work in a lot of remote First Nation communities and they don't get to see a lot of things and a lot of them are have lost connection to culture so bringing these tools bringing these knowledge um, to them and them not having to leave to find it <coughs> is super important right because we should all be able to learn where we live and not have to kind of go outside so yeah it's exciting. Wow. Well, thank you so much. We're proud of all of the good work that you are doing. Uh, thank you for just being with us today. Um, it's inspirational, absolutely inspirational. Um, think outside the box for our communities, the possibilities. You know, we have a lot to bring as Indigenous peoples. We have a lot to teach the world. And this, this is a great resource, a great tool. So thank you so much. Um, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I'm walking away, my I, like just watching this and hearing like even that glimpse, like just a glimpse of some of the stories just really makes my heart happy. So I hope you all feel like your cup is has gotten a little fuller today in our can do links to learning session so we hope to see you again be well and um walk in a good way take take a moment step outside connect with that beautiful land that creator has given to us so be well everyone we'll see you again soon i'm happy